First off, I would like to thank everybody for having me here. It is an honor and privilege for me to be here among you. Um, well, I was diagnosed with MS in the spring of 2007 when I was 14 and a half. Shortly afterwards, I was put on conventional MS therapy. It consisted mainly of my injection and drugs for every one of my symptoms, it seems. Um, so uh, I underwent stem cell transplant two and a half years ago. So I used um, conventional MS therapy for a little bit over three years. Now, during these three years, I had four major flare-ups where I had to be put on more injections and oral steroids as well. And these um, injections and oral steroids caused more problems for me, which included um, hallucinations at some time. Um, and my symptoms were pretty much the same before and after I had these treatments. At that time, I could hardly walk. I could not walk in a straight line. I would always bump into people or objects, which actually kind of hurt at <laughs> times. <laughs> yeah. um, and back then, I was told again and again that I should be on a wheelchair which they make me very happy. Mm -hmm. um, and I also had trouble writing and I couldn't type or text. I couldn't put on makeup. Um, I couldn't brush my teeth with one hand. Um, and even when I went to drink water from a glass, I had to bring both my hands and put them around my glass and then bring my neck and mouth towards my glass instead of vice versa. Um, oh, I'm not kidding, but one of my major concerns at that time was not to poke my eye out with a spoon or a fork or something. Um, I also had like spells of dizziness and foggy fogginess in my head. Um, I couldn't speak well. Um, I had pain, I had trouble swallowing, I had major fatigue where I couldn't even get out of bed. Um, I had to be homeschooled actually because of that. I couldn't attend school. Um, so in addition to all of these problems, I had to deal with the side effects of my injections. Um, I took my injections almost religiously because I was really adamant on getting better and surviving, but my injection size became so painful um, after a while that every injection was like torture to me. Um, my injections also caused me to get depression, constipation, um, caused my skin to break out in pimples and rashes, um, it caused headache and flu-like symptoms, and it caused itchy skin. My skin got really dry and itchy. So I really couldn't see how my uh, conventional treatment had helped me. If anything, it seemed to have added to my misery. Um, at that time, I really had no hope. I really couldn't see a future for myself. Um, But since I had transplant, um, I, I was on antiviral and antibiotics for a time after that, but when those prescriptions ran out, I did not take any more prescription drugs. Um, I still take the occasional Tylenol or Advil for minor headaches and over-the-counter drugs for colds. But besides that, I take no medication. But I'm actually hoping that someday soon, one of you will come up with a treatment for, to rebuild the myelin, and then I will definitely take that. <laughs>
Um, well, since I had my transplant, my life changed completely. Then, back then, I was fatigued all the time. Um, I couldn't get out of bed, as I told you. Um, now, um, I actually get up at 6. My first class starts at 7. And um, a lot of the time, I'm studying and exercising till like 1 a.m. or 1.15. And now I actually run every day. And back then I couldn't even, I could hardly walk. Um, now I just go up and down the stairs easily. I don't bump into people or objects, so that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, right now I have to write for my class. I type, I text a lot. Um, yeah, um, when I leave the house now, I'm not worried about dizziness or fogginess or anything. Um, I still can't say though I'm 100% normal. I still feel like MS has robbed me of my teenage years. Uh, but even though I still have some minor tremors in my right hand and some occasional clumsiness, um, I still feel like Compared to where I was before, this is like heaven to me. Because um, now I think about things like what courses I should take or what universities I should attend to next, I should attend next. And even what clothes I should wear, um, I actually think about my future now. I have a lot of hope. Um, I have a future now. So, thank you. Robert, Roxanne, could I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people out across America have read about or heard about or seen something on television dealing with stem cell therapies. And I'm wondering what was going through your mind. I understand the frustrations of dealing with conventional therapies that don't work, but was the idea or the prospect of getting a stem cell transplant, scary? Actually, no. At that time, I was feeling so bad. I knew that I was heading towards major disability or kind of premature death even. So at that time, transplant was like, to me, I was all, let's go. I want it. <laughs> And as you've described it to your friends and family, mm -hmm. um, are they were they scared by it or? Um... Well, um, some of my friends and family were a little bit concerned initially, like, "What is this exactly? Tell me in detail what this is." But when I told them about it, they were like, "You should go get it," especially my friends and close family. Well, I share your frustration with conventional therapies. <laughs> uh -oh. Well, um, when I was first diagnosed, um, they told me you have MS. Um, and basically, they told me, okay, here are our options. Take this drug and this drug and injections and all that. So my liver wasn't too happy, but <laughs> yeah. Um, so every drug they gave me, um, after a while it wouldn't work. So they would change it, give me another drug which wouldn't work, and then they would, so it just went on and on. Um, so while I was taking my injection and drugs, um, I kept getting worse and worse. So it was obvious that it wasn't working at all. And not only was I getting worse, I was getting like new symptoms and I had to deal with the side effects of taking so many different drugs. So um, it was a relief to me, relief. Transplant. Yeah. Dr. Burr? Yeah, actually on that note, Dr. Burr, um, 
I would really like to thank you for giving my life back to me. You are a visionary and you will always and forever remain my hero. Uh -huh. well, Roxanne, um, my reward is seeing you get better and uh, seeing your courage and your determination. Uh, you're my hero. Thank you. And. Um, uh, Rox, Roxanne's mother, Azita, is with it. Did you want to say anything? Um, I, I just want to thank you to be here. Um, um, when, uh, when Roxanne was diagnosed with MS, it was a tremendous shock. And it just turned our family, uh, it turned our lives uh, upside down. One minute I had this uh, beautiful, smart, Athletical daughter, and the next minute she was becoming incapacitated day by day. But, and watching her deteriorate on conventional therapy, I think was the lowest point in my life. Uh, prior to the transplant, Roxanne uh, had been seen and treated at three of the most uh, famous uh, medical centers in the US. And um, seeing that the continuation of the um, conventional treatment was leading to her uh, permanent disability and most likely premature death, um, so I thought there's, you know, there has to be something else. So I went to our doctors and said, what else is out there? What can we do? And they came back to me and they said, well, this is it. It is what it is. There is nothing else. But what we can do is we can take her from this uh, conventional therapy and put her on other conventional therapies. And the outcome would be pretty much the same with not much hope for improvement. In my experience, um, most of the neurologists that I spoke to um, didn't know much about a stem cell transplant, or um, they looked at it negatively. I think, I believe a more compre uh, comprehensive awareness campaign um, in, for MS, uh, for stem cell, would be really beneficial. But I didn't give up. Um, we are fortunate to have a lot of doctors in our family. I, I started asking questions, and of course, I went to the internet. Mm -hmm. And I research and research everywhere, everything about stem cell transplant. And one very late evening, as I was sitting on the computer and researching, I came across uh, the video of a young man who had just gone through a stem cell transplant for MS under the care of Dr. Burt at Northwestern University. And he was talking about how um, before he had all these symptoms and after the transplant, he had hardly any of the symptoms, and he was drug-free. So the next day, I called Dr. Burt's office, and I uh, started the process of getting Roxanne the treatment. But this journey uh, took about a year, um, from finding Dr. Burt to actually going to the transplant. I went to Roxanne's doctors, and I asked them for a referral. And uh, some of her doctors were against transplant, they said that the chemo, um, she could die from it, or um, it could cause infertility, which at the time, it was not even part of us, our concern. So at the, at the end, we just sat down um, as a family, and uh, Roxanne turned around and said to her father and I that um, no, no matter what the, what the outcome of the transplant is, no matter what the risk of the, the transplant, I just can't go on like this. And I think at that point in my, her mind, there was no contrast or comparison, you know. Um, we, we are glad that we did this, very glad. And it's been, a, um, it's been two and a half years, and the changes have been just tremendous. Um, there is a there is a documentary that's going to be coming out. I hope you will see that it shows Roxanne videos of prior to transplant, after the transplant. You know her difficulty walking and then running. I mean, it's just it's amazing. But Roxanne has uh, has a lot of friends her own age who are in an MS uh, support group, and a lot of these girls 
have the same symptoms as Roxanne did prior to her transplant. And I always wonder, uh, how would it be different if these girls, uh, if the insurance was m more available and affordable and more people would benefit from this type of treatment? There's no doubt in my mind, from my own experience, that transplant is the best way for, it's the best treatment for MS. And the conventional therapy was not even slowing her progression. People always ask me, how was Roxanne before? You were her mother, you were her caretaker. How was Roxanne before the transplant? And how was Roxanne after the transplant? And I always tell them, it is so amazing. I've seen a miracle happen right in front of my eyes. God gave Roxanne back to me. And Dr. Bird, through his vision, Gave her a second chance at life. Thank you, Dr. Bird, for saving our family. Thank you. Thank you, Roxanne and Azita, just to be here and share your story. As Meredith said, MS doesn't just affect the patient, but the whole family. It means a lot to us that you came here and shared this with us today. To find out more about what stem cells can do to treat diseases like cancer to arthritis, Alzheimer's, stroke and heart disease, contact the Stem for Life Foundation.